Today we're going to cover chapter 11, section 1, and we're going to be covering sequences in series. So let's first define what a sequence is, and a sequence is a function that computes an ordered list. The function values, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, all the way up to a sub n, these are going to be the terms of the sequence. These little numbers that are right here, these are like labels, or they're telling you that this is the first term. This would be the second term. So it's telling you the position that the number or the term is in the sequence. When you have an infinite sequence, it's a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. So it's going to continue on forever. And a lot of times you're going to see it with the ellipse or the dot, dot, dot after the last number. If the domain of a function consists of the first n positive integers, then the sequence is called finite. So for example, if I ask you to list the first five terms, that would be an example of a finite sequence. So, for example, if I gave you the sequence of the list of odd numbers, like 1, 3, 5, this 1 would be considered a sub 1, it's the first term. The 3 is a sub 2, it's the second term. The 5 would be a sub 3. So again, those little subscripts are telling you the spot or the position in the sequence that it is. Now, you'll be given a rule, and then they're going to tell you, find the first five numbers, or for, find the first ten numbers. So, for example, the even number rule would be a sub n equals two times n. So, in order to find the first five numbers in the sequence, you would plug in a sub 1, so to get the first term, you do 2 times 1, and that would give you the first even integer. Then to get the second one, you plug in a 2 for the n, and that would give you 4. And you can keep doing this to get the list of the even numbers in this sequence. And if they ask you to list the first five, this is what you would do. Now, if they ask you to find the hundredth term, you would plug in 100 for n, and then do 2 times 100, and the 100th term would be 200. So in the homework, at the beginning, they're just asking you to list, they're going to give you a rule, and they're going to ask you to give the first five numbers. Then later on in the homework, they're going to say, find the 50th term or find the 100th term, and then you just plug in that number for the n and follow order of operations. So it says, Write the first five terms of the sequence. Assume that n begins with 1. So here, to find the first term, I'm going to plug in a 1 everywhere that I see an n. 1 plus 1, 1 plus 2. I'm going to simplify it. 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So my first term, a sub 1, is going to be 2 thirds. Then to find the second term in the sequence, every place that I see an n, I'm going to plug in a 2. And this gives me 3 fourths for the second term in my sequence. Then a sub 3, every place that I see an n, I'm going to plug in a 3. 3 plus 1, 3 plus 2, 4 over 5, and that gives me the third term. Then to find the fourth, do the same thing. 4 plus 1, 4 plus 2, 5 over 6, and that's the fourth term. Now, if you start to see a pattern and notice that the numerator increased by 1, the denominator increased by 2, you don't really have to do all of this math. You can realize that this sequence does have a pattern, and then you don't have to show all of this. But again, at the beginning, show me how you're plugging them in to establish the pattern. So my first five terms would be two-thirds, three-fourths, four-fifths, five-sixths, six-sevenths. Now, later on in the web assigned homework, at the beginning, this is all you're doing. Later on, again, they might say, find the 50th term, where n equals 50, and then you would plug in 50 plus 1, 50 plus 2, 51 over 52. 
So again, this is all we're doing in the first night of the 11-1 homework. So for example two, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna plug in one, two, three, four, and five for N, and then simplify, follow order of operations. So my first term, this is the rule. So I'm gonna plug in a one every place that I see an N. So negative one to the first over two to the first, negative one over two. So my first term is negative half. Then my second term, negative one squared over two times two squared. And this gives me negative one squared is positive one and two squared is four. Notice what's gonna happen here is my sequence is gonna alternate between a positive and a negative number. Because remember, anytime your exponent is even and you're raising a negative number to an even power, it makes it become positive. If the exponent is an odd number on a negative number, it's gonna stay negative. So this will alternate between positive and negative numbers. So the third term in the sequence, negative one to the third power over two to the third, negative one to the third is negative one, two to the third is one eight, or is eight. Now, remember that when you have a negative, you can either put it in either the numerator or the denominator, or pull it out and put it in front of the entire fraction. The fourth term in the sequence, now it's an even power, so that negative one is gonna turn positive, so this will become one over 16. And then the last term, it's an odd number. So the negative one will stay a negative one. And then two to the fifth is 32. So negative one 30 seconds. And those are your first five terms in that sequence using that rule that was given. So this is what you'll be doing at the beginning of the WebAssign homework. Next, we have some more, more vocabulary. And this is the definition of convergent and divergent. So convergent is when your sequence gets closer and closer to some real number. So for example, if you had the rule one over N and you start plugging in numbers, like one over one is one, then one over two, then one over three, just plugging in one, two, three, four for N, notice my sequence here is getting smaller and smaller. So this is slowly converging to zero. When it's divergent, then the sequence does not converge. It's gonna keep growing and growing towards infinity. Now, when it asks for a series, that is gonna be the sum of the sequence. Now, if you don't, haven't learned this new summation notation that I'm gonna be showing you, then if it asks you to find a sum of a sequence, then what you would have had to have done is gone back and add up the terms in your sequence. However, what we're gonna be seeing is this Greek letter, sigma, and this symbol represents to sum up. This is called sigma. It's called summation notation or it might also be called sigma notation. So when you see this sigma, it means that it wants you to sum up the terms in your sequence. Now, in order to use this summation notation, we need to start out with our I value to be one. So what I'm gonna show you here is the summation notation. The N at the top will tell you how many terms you're gonna be summing up. So like if N equaled five, then it would be expecting you to find the sum of the five terms of that sequence. And then, down here, it'll have a equal or i equals one, and again, sometimes it, this is gonna be called the this is called the index of summation, 
and it's usually a letter I. Sometimes they might use a different variable. The N at the top is going to be the limit, is the upper limit of the summation. So it's going to tell you how many terms to add. Here, this 1, this is the lower limit. It has to equal 1. So we would start with the first term and go to whatever that n value is. So this would be the lower limit of the summation. So an example of a finite sequence, you might have s sub n equals a sub 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 and then it would stop at some n value. And that's going to be represented by this summation notation. n i equals 1 and a sub i, or a times i. And then over here, for the infinite sequence, and we're going to see some rules and properties of how to do this. So for this one, for the summation to infinity, means it's never going to end, dot, dot, dot. And then we would have the sigma here plus a sub i and then a i. Okay, so these are the summation properties. In this right here, the letter C, both of these C's, is a constant. The N, remember, is your upper limit. Now, you're going to need to memorize these rules for summation, these properties. An example of the first property, when it's a constant, you would be given something like this. They wanted you to sum the first four terms when it's just the constant in your sequence. So the sequence is this, five, five, five. That would be your sequence when it's a constant. And then if you had to do it by hand, you would do five plus five plus five plus five and get 20. This one's easy enough. However, the shortcut is just to take this n value and multiply it by the constant. That's the NC. So NC, my N was 4, my constant was 5, and to get that sum of that sequence is 20. So let's say it was bigger. Let's say the example was find the sum of the first 100 terms when the sequence has just a constant. So five, 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 a hundred times. Instead of having to add five plus five plus five plus five a hundred times, it's a lot easier to just do the NC. A hundred is your N. The constant is five. So the sum of a hundred terms where each term, each one of the terms is a five is 500. The next property is when we have our rule here, our i, and where it's multiplied by a constant. What we're going to do here is we're going to pull the constant and put it out front of the summation notation. So for example, if I have the summation notation, and let's say we have a 5 here and an i equal 1, and then it's 5i. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this 5 to the front, and then I'm going to have 5, the summation notation, the letter i, and then I have a 5 here and an i equal 1. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking this i, and I'm going to plug in 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 5. And then I'm going to multiply it by the 5 that was in the front. So I'm plugging in 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 
plus five. I'm gonna add those up. I get 15. I'm gonna multiply it by the constant in the front. And the sum of those terms will be 75. Now, if I did it the long way, I would have done a sub one is five times one, because my rule is five i. This is the rule. And then I'm plugging in i equals one, two, three, four, and five. So if I did each one, two, three, four, and five, this gives me five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And then when I go back and add this whole list, it gives me 75. So this is the faster way using the summation notation. Now the last property here is when you're adding two things, what you're gonna do is give each one of these its own summation notation. So this one becomes this one and here as well. And we're gonna see some examples. So for example, let's say, let's do another example doing it the long way and then doing with the summation notation rules. So for example, if I ask you to sum up the first five terms, and that n isn't always a five, and let's say the rule is three i minus two. So let's say I do it the long way, and my rule would have been a sub n equals three n minus two. The long way would have been plugging in a one, plugging in a two. This one's gonna give me three minus two is one. This one gives me six minus two is four. A sub three, three times three minus two, seven, four. These are easy enough where you could probably do them out, just do it quickly, but some of the rules will be more challenging. And 15 minus two is 13. Then you'd have to go back Add these numbers. Once I add all of these up, one plus four plus seven plus 10 plus 13, I get 35. However, if I applied my summation notation rule, this will simplify things a little bit. So this would have been doing it the long way. However, I could also do it faster using my summation notation. Now, here I would give each one its own little thing. So I would plug three, and then the i, and five, and i equal one. And then here, this would have been just the constant, which is two. And let me change this to a minus sign. Okay, so then here, what I would do is go ahead and plug this in. And then like this constant here, this is the easy one, it's the NC. So five times two, this is gonna give me 10. And then over here, I would take the three, and then I'm gonna multiply it by one plus two plus three. And we're gonna see a rule for the I coming up um, on the next slide after this blank one. It's gonna be a rule that we do instead of having to do this. So then if I add all of this, this is 15 times three, and then this gives me 45 minus 10, and it's 35. But we're gonna see a rule for the I on the next slide. So this is using the sigma notation and then the blue was doing it all out by hand. So let's see the properties, I mean, sorry, the rules. So whenever it's just an I, what you can do is instead of having to add one plus two plus three, if like N was five, one plus two plus three plus four plus five, instead, you're gonna plug it into this, whatever your N value is. When it's an I squared, this is the rule we'll use. 
when it's i cubed, this will be the rule that we will use. You will have an n value from on top of your sigma. So for example, let's say we have the sigma notation, again with a five here, i equal one, and then the i. If I just use this rule here, I'm gonna plug in my n value, remember this is n, so I'm gonna do five times five plus one over two, five times six, divide by two, and this would give me 30 over two, which is 15. Now again, you could have simplified this and then just do three times five and you get 15. If this were, let's say the n value was 500. Then we would have done 500 times 500 plus one over two. Again, I could simplify this, make this a 250. So 250 times 501, and the sum of the first 500 integers, as you're increasing them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, would be 125,250. That would be the sum. So let's try to do some examples now using the properties and the rules. So here, my sigma notation with just a constant. So I'm gonna use that property, that NC. And again, remember this is N, and this five is my constant. So all I have to do here is 40 times five, and it's 200. What this is saying is we are adding five plus five plus five 40 times, and that sum, so this would have been 40 fives, and it equals 200. We're using the summation property, n i equals one, and then the nc. For number four, we're gonna use a property and a summation rule. So we're gonna be using the property that is n. So we're gonna be using the property i equals one, ci this. And then for the i here, we're gonna be using the rule that we just saw. And for the i part, we're gonna be using the n times n plus one divided by two. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna be using the property where we pull the constant to the front. And now what we're gonna do is two sigma notation with the 22 and then the i here. And remember the i, we're using that rule. So we're gonna do 22. We are doing 22 times 22 plus one over two. And then also remember, we have this two in front, so we could put that two in the front. So then these twos would cancel. And so now I'm just gonna be multiplying 22 times 23, and I get 506. It's a lot easier than having to plug in i equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 22, because what I would have gotten here is two, four, six, all the way, plugging in all the way up to 22, and then have to go back and add those. For this next one, I'm gonna give each one of these its own summation notation. So for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and use pull the constant to the front, and then I'm doing the I squared, and remember the I squared, this is gonna be the rule where we're gonna do N, let me write it over here. Remember I squared, that rule is N times N plus one times two N plus one over six. And I'm, my N value here is the 14. So what I'm gonna be doing here is the two in the front times 14 
times 14 plus 1 is 15. And then 2 times 14 is 28 plus 1 is 29. All divided by 6. Now I have the constant summation. And remember here, 14 and a 3 and an I equal 1. Remember, this is just the NC. So this one is the NC. And my N value was 14. And my constant was 3. So I'll go ahead and multiply all of this across. And my final answer here is 1,988. I'm going to just simplify this. This gives me 2 times 1,015 minus 14 times 3. And when I multiply the 1015 times 2, this gives me a 2030 minus 42. And that's how I get the 1988. Let's try the last example. Again, we are going to separate each one of these. So each one is going to get its own summation notation. So let's go ahead and pull them all apart. So for the first one, they all have the same sigma with the 6 on the top, the i equals 1 on the bottom. So this one's going to be the I squared. And remember, this one, the rule, and I'll just write the rule here, N times N plus 1, 2N plus 1 over 6. Then the blue one, we're going to put the constant in the front, the 6, the I equal 1, and this is I. Remember, the rule for I is going to be the N times the N plus 1 over 2. And then also remember, we have the constant in the front of this one. And then the last is just a constant. It's the purple. Same sigma. And it's got the constant 5. So remember, this one is going to be the n times the c. So let's fill in our n's. Our n's are 6 on all of them. So for the red, I'm going to plug in 6. And then 6 plus 1 is 7. And then 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. And then for the blue, the constant was 3. Don't forget about that one. And then my n value is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7 over 2. And then over here, the purple, my n value is 6. My constant was 5. So now I can simplify the red. This gives me 91. Simplify the blue, 63. The purple, 30. Add them all up. And my sum is 184. So it makes it a lot easier than trying to plug in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 into that and then going back and adding all the terms. So these are the rules and the properties. But again, your day one homework for 11 is just going to be plugging in, finding the first five terms, and then also maybe finding a 50th term. And you just take that n value and you plug it into the rule that's given. The day two is going to use these rules and properties.